Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all doing well. And today, my friends, are back with the Chaos Dwarf vs. Lizardmen showdown. It's going to be Astrogoth facing off against Oxyodal. Should be quite a bit of fun with the recently buffed Ancient Salamander. So in this patch, the Ancient Salamanders did get a pretty serious buff. I believe they got a little bit of a accuracy or some sort of a damage buff. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, again, when we do our patch note video coming up here in the next few days, we'll go over all that. Now, as far as my build goes in the front line, it is going to be Chaos Dwarf Warriors, which, you know, Dwarf Warriors and Longbeards have always been very good against the Lizardmen. They uptrade against Saurus Warriors. They do very well against Skin Cohorts. And now that all the Dwarves have Silver Shields, like, I figured this is going to be good against them, even though I am the Chaos Dwarfs. So we got those guys. We do also have the Arawar Chaos Dwarf Warriors. These are the Blazing Beards of Basharic. And these guys are great. They have Armor Piercing Blasting Charges and, uh, yeah, are just very stalwart. You can see their stats are 48 and 54. I mean, no joke. Those guys can certainly hang. Up in the high ground, we have Hobgoblin Cutthroat, so I have a couple of these, and these are going to be the Shielded variant, expecting a lot of Chameleon Skinks and Poke coming in. I know Anticity likes to play Kiting builds, so having the Hobgoblin Cutthroats as an initial screen to absorb that ammunition felt right. On the other side, the same thing with some Goblin Laborers. We have a single Magma Cannon. These are going to be super good against Lizards. Lizardmen love to spam just skin Cohorts and just swarm objectives with high capture weight. And, you know, Chaos Dwarves can do that too. We have our Hobgoblin units, which are relatively cheap and fast and also have good capture weight, but Lizardmen take it to another level, simply because they have 48 movement speed and are also cheaper than the Hobgoblins. But the Magma Cannon, a good choice. Now, this is one of my favorite techs against Dinos. This is the double Infernal Castle, and these guys are the ultimate Chaos Dwarf snipers. They have huge range at 180, they have massive armor piercing, and if they get attacked by a big dinosaur, like a Bastilodon or whatever, Arc of Sotek, they have anti-large armor piercing halberds. I think these guys will be uh, really, really good in a couple matchups. Not like in every single uh, matchup, they're not one of those ubiquitous, like super high-tuned units, but as a niche against like Ancient Salamanders, Basilodons, like other monsters, a great choice in my opinion. And Astrogoth. Astrogoth is super strong. Hands down the strongest thing of the Chaos Dwarfs in my opinion. Uh, 130 speed, just he has the ability to gain a ton of physical resist, although I didn't bring it this game because I was trying to cut corners and get these characters. And uh, he does also have some decent spells. Hellhammer is probably the best spell in the lore of Hashet. It's like a, like a kind of pendulum, really, really long range, can do a ton of damage. What's not to love? And uh, yeah, he's good to go. That's pretty much what he's, uh, he's packing here. Now, for Anticity, coming out with a million Chameleon Skinks, which you would think, like, you know, Chameleon Skinks have never been good against the, uh, the the Chaos or the regular Dwarves, but against Chaos Dwarves, they certainly have a ton of relevance because Chaos Dwarves have a lot of light armor, actually. Outside of the more expensive Chaos Dwarf units, they do have their monsters, all of which have about 50 armor, with the exception of the Destroyer. Uh, you have the Kadai Fireborn, which only have 50 or 60 armor. And these are things that could be good against Lizardmen Infantry Swarms, right? So, yeah, you're going to probably not hate having a ton of Chameleon Skinks, and the Ancient Salamanders should be able to blast me as well. I forgot to mention, I brought another cool unit for you guys. I brought the Skullcracker. So this is one of the trains. It is a lawnmower, and it does have perfect vigor as well. So over the course of a long battle, it can certainly run over a lot of infantry. So we'll be kind of keeping tabs on that as we do progress. Now, the Infernal Castle is up here on the high ground. They're able to kind of shoot through this hill. Sometimes line of sight is strange in this game, but you can see how they're doing good damage against the Ancient Salamander here. Ancient Salamander, though, has put some big hurt on my Hobgoblins. And uh, I, yeah, I, I got to look at what the buffs were to that thing, but I'll make sure to leave it in the comments. But yeah, fat damage right there, routing off my poor Hobgoblins. Up on the high ground, we do use our uh, lawnmower, the Skullcracker, and I use the more power, infinite power. It gives acceleration, mass, and speed, which is very good for escaping. And we are able to do some okay damage and also absorb all the uh, shots from those uh, javelins there. And now the Hobgoblins will move in. Hobgoblins typically will out-trade skin cohorts in straight fighting, but Saurus Warriors could probably still give them some big trouble. Over here, Astrogoth just being annoying, very, very quick. He's able to chase down this ancient salamander, and he's a really, really good fighter. He's got insanely good stats, 60, 50. He's poisoned right now, so it's going to be mitigated a little bit, but Oxyadol is also a good counter against him to an extent. Oxyadol has great armor piercing. He's mobile. Can uh, definitely give the business to Astrogoth if I'm not careful. He's one of those characters that is just unassuming. You often ignore him, and he just, uh, you know, ends up catching up with you later in the game here. So the Blazing Beards of Bashariker are here, and we do also see the Chaos Dwarf Warriors grabbing the middle objective. Side objective going to be controlled by Anticity here, as he's got an unholy legion of Chameleon Skinks just poking. But I'm happy to absorb the am ammunition on the Infernal Castellans. They have 120 armor, so they really don't care. And they're working down this Ancient Salamander over the course of a game, which normally Chaos Dwarfs don't have like traditional ca cannons that are good against large targets. They do have the Death Shriek rocket, which has an anti-large profile, but in my experience, it's, um, it's very, very mediocre, so... Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits getting run over by the Feral Cold Ones. Very, very nice usage there as the old Skullcracker is going to be pulling back. And now we got the big boys coming in. The Infernal Iron Sworn going to be throwing their unholy hand grenades here. And it does some big damage. Able to melt those Saurus Warriors. 
If you want to get blasting charges on chaos dwarves, the cheapest you can get one for is 900. Unlike, you know, the basic dwarves, for example, you can get them on, uh, you know, for like a minor on like, what, 400 something. So a little bit of an advantage that the old Dowie have. Now, Hammer of Wrath going down and it does a ton of damage. That was overcasted though. That cost 22 wins of magic and it just nailed all those chameleon skinks. I was in chat with Anticity during this game. When that happened, we were both like, oh my God, that did a lot more damage than we both expected. But the Blazing Beards being absolute chads in the middle. Chaos Dwarf Infantry, very, very resilient, even fighting something that's a counter. And we do see Astrogoth getting some flying jump attacks here, which is pretty great. And he is able to force a lot of those dudes back. Battle Rage is on in the middle, but a lot of Lizardman capture weight has prevented me from capping. I am ahead on damage value. And the old Magma Cannon here still trying to shoot at all these Chameleon Skinks, although their loose formation is making it a little bit tricky to grab them. Up on the high ground, capture weight is in my favor. Hobgoblin's going to be backed up by the Infernal Iron Sworn and the old Skullcracker, able to chase off some of those uh, Lizardmen units, but is going to be coming back in to try and run down these skin cohorts. As far as value so far, uh, it's done okay. Well, a couple hundred, but the game is very early and it spent a lot of the time kind of running and trying to get away from things, so. But eventually the Infernal Iron Sworn, which are basically Iron Breakers, they're super jacked. 64 melee defense is really serious. Uh, they're going to be able to win this. And the, uh, the, old, uh, the old beast gets in there. It's a nice little lawnmower effect. It's pretty cool how the Chaos Dwarf trains actually have like train sound effects. I don't know if it played for you guys right there. I usually record with my sound off, but um, where I can't hear it, it's distracting me a little bit, but even so, fun stuff. Hobgoblins performing very well. High ground objective could be going for us. Lizardmen doing very, very well on the points though. I uh, haven't been able to wrestle a point from them so far. Sending in some Goblin Labors and the Magma Cannon with the Steel Chair here. It does have a damage over time effect, so it hits. And then a little Vortex is summoned where it does work. And the Hammer of Hashit coming down, baby. Gonna be dropping a fat one here on the Saurus Warriors and doing a ton of damage. I think that's probably the best spell in the lore of Hashit. And in my experience, it's just been super cost effective. So one Ancient Salamander does get broken and probably forced off the battlefield. The two Castellans here have been performing quite well. And now they've got their long rifles out and they're gonna be trying to snipe your boy Oxyatl. Although they're having some weird line of sight issues. Like they keep saying obstructed when I'm trying to pop them, which is very unfortunate. But now they're gonna be shooting over at the Ark of Sotek. But the Ark of Sotek is able to force me off the middle here. And despite being ahead on value, I felt as if I wasn't truly ahead on value. Lizardmen do have healing, but he didn't bring any. So the value is what it is. You're, you're seeing it in its uh, truest form here. As the old uh, Skullcracker continues to run these units over, the Infernal Iron Sworn just crumping pretty much everything they fight. Granted, taking big armor piercing damage from the Clever Girls. More Saurus on the way in, and really, really good usage of the Ancient Salamander. You know, my Infernal boys can't be everywhere at once. So chasing down these this other Salamander across the map is, is quite problematic. And with the recent buffs it got, I wonder how much damage it's done. Let's go ahead and check here. Not too much. Well, 800 and it still has quite a bit of ammo. So yeah, against my elite Chaos Dwarf Infantry and even basic Chaos Dwarf Infantry, I would say are kind of in the elite ballpark. Yeah, I can see that being a pretty good tech. So Lizardman players, you know, you guys rejoice. On the far side, Hobgoblins doing some glorious Mortal Kombat here. So they're going to be battling and Hobgobl Hobgoblins, excuse me. A little bit of a hiccup there are a pretty good answer against the feral cold ones feral cold ones are heavily armored but these guys you know can definitely get them on the charge and have sustained trading and they have a charge bonus of 40 which isn't bad so we got infernal iron sworn up on this point some hobgoblins going to be chilling here hoping my elite infantry can hold that against the tide of lizards so i can then start to focus on other points high ground point looks like it's going to be flipping to us but it keeps going back and forth and now we're going to be getting the skull cracker using more power and trying to run over the ancient salamander so it's not doing too much damage there's a couple hundred damage there but I just had to stop it from shooting. So that is what the Skullcracker is going to be doing. While well, the Iron Sworn, obviously, Iron Breakers would dominate Sars. So would these guys. And I'd, I'd love to do some stat comparisons to see what the advantages are of the Chaos Dwarf and Dwarf variants. It's quite a bit of fun. Middle's looking a little bit scary, though. Oxyadol has been an absolute raid boss. My two uh, my two Castellans here have their long-range rifles and are putting a little bit hurt on Oxyadol as well. So they're having a, a bit of a range duel. I believe Oxyadol does have good missile resist of 40%, though. So typically, he's going to be favored in such duels. But if we can get him down, that would be quite a boon for sure. On the back, Hobgoblins chilling out here. Infernal Iron Sworn are hanging out on objective number three. And uh, they do have some blasting charges waiting in the wings as my hobgoblins overextend to their doom. But it is what it is. They're able to shut down some of the mobility and uh, they did their best. So I do move the two Infernal Castellans onto the middle objective. I figured I needed the capture weight. Magma Cannon still shooting and just routing off whatever it can. So the Magma Cannon is, uh, is a very, very strong piece of equipment. 1200 value. It costs 950 when you strip down its abilities. Although I think I brought all of its abilities. So uh, in that case, I think it's 1150. But yeah, the Magma Cannons are still um, very, very good. High Ground has flipped to us. We have the two cap now. We get that back, but we're quite behind on points. And Lizardmen are a faction that can just steal points so quickly. Astrogoth moving up to the High Ground. He's got his uh, stone legs going, trying to hunt down the Ancient Salamander here. I believe Ancient Salamanders do have a ton of fire resist as well. Don't they, or do they not? Missile resist and physical resist here. Okay, so something to think about. Astrogoth doing battle with the Ancient Salamander, maybe going to be breaking it, and this objective is going to be probably held under our control for a minute. We do have the Goblin Laborers, a couple of them providing two capture weight each, 
Granted, these chameleons, ganks, and skink cohorts forming in, this is where lizardmen really shine. Their ability to just roll up on points with hordes, hordes of lizard people and just take those. It's very strong. So we do summon out the anti-large bull renders. I had them in reserve. I, you know, I saw the Bastilodon. I saw the Salamander. So in my brain, I was like, I need some anti-large. But in reality, I started to realize, I'm like, oh, I should have brought the infantry variant. Because they have good armor piercing, even on the infantry variant. It probably would be enough. Skullcracker going to be coming down, running over the cohort of Sotek. We do have a value lead of about 1,000. So not enough to really have like a massive advantage on the battlefield. And the Iron Sworn are just kind of being zerged by uh, spams of Clever Girls and Cohorts. And Oxyadol obviously doing quite good with these guys and their, uh, their, their smoldering helmets. So incredibly cool as they hold on here. In the backfield, these guys going to be getting nailed by a Wind Blast. So the Hobgoblin Sneaky gets with their Precursor Ammo coming in to try and help. Just kind of parking them on the edge of the objective while the Infernal Iron Sworn fight valiantly to try and hold on there. My two Castellans, they were able to trade okay with Oxyadol, but he has been getting the last cackle here as he's been winning most of these fights. And the cohort of Sotek is getting smashed. And, you know, Bull Centaurs still do a lot of damage against infantry, even if they are the anti-large variant. They just have a good charge bonus, just high base weapon strength, good combat stats, generally speaking. But they have a bonus for its large of 25. Uh, if you guys saw the Beastman game I put up versus Indy Pride, like, they just absolutely crush big things. And it is it is no joke. Now, here we get the old Skullcracker going to be hunting down Oxyadol. He's at 800 HP, and he's having a bad time. I mean, 100 armor here, this thing's uh, somewhat durable. And the old Skullcracker is going to be hunting down the Lord of the Lizardmen. And if we could take him down, get that leadership penalty on the enemy army, that would be a huge one for the old Chaos Dwarves. As you can see, Oxyadol is terrified, running for the hills. While well, the Skullcracker yells, more power, unlimited power, more, more, more. Oxyadol, though, is going to get some love from the uh, Feral Cold One, so they're going to be on their way in. We do also see another Ancient Salamander summing out. So in its first life, it didn't get that much value. This is the one that the Infernal Castellans were able to take down, but still, it is proving to be a decent answer against some of the infantry here. Let's see what kind of damage we get. And it shoots in, and that's pretty darn good. That is not bad at all. Wind Blast coming down on my Sneaky gets there, so a nice little combo there by Ent. But we do manage to hold on to the objective. Objective 2 here is looking like it's going back and forth and back and forth. And sadly, I'm having to use Bull Centaurs to fight Chameleon Skinks. There's really just not any targets I can get to easily. If I go after the Ancient Salamander, he just hides them amongst his Chameleons and his Skink Cohorts and things like that. So I'm just like committing them to fight, trying to get the objective. And I believe Astrogoth did get killed or routed. Yeah, he got pushed to the back of the map here. So he got very low just fighting on the high ground objective. So now we bring in the Kadai Fireborn. These units are pretty good. I don't know about against Lizardmen. I feel like the Chameleon Skinks might be nice, but they're like... What's, they're so much better than Croxigors. They do cost 1,500, so they cost four or 500 more than Croxigors, but they have good generalist stats, and uh, they pack a serious punch with high speed. So you can definitely move them up against infantry swarms, and I do think there's going to be a couple matchups in which the Kadai Fireborn will actually be good, which is very encouraging, and that's what I love about Chaos Dwarves. They have such diverse playstyles. They're not really pigeonholed into playing any particular way. You can play artillery, you can play horde mode, you can play elite, you can do a combination of any of those things. Like It's such a, such a rich playstyle, and I know there will be a meta, that will develop, but I think you'll be able to perpetually surprise people with Strange Chaos Dwarf builds, which is, I think, a sign of a really well-made faction. Objective three, going to be flipped. Lizardman going to take that one back, and the points game is getting a little bit scary for us as he keeps maneuvering, and he has equalized the value as well, and he's just using these, these legions of cheap units to grab my points. Although, could I, Fireborn, going to have something to say to the managers of these tank cohorts as they are just going to absolutely cook them, and these are some cooler-looking units. Look at them just absolutely cleaving through these bad boys. Lizardman flying in every which direction. As the uh, Hobgoblin Riders being pulled in, probably something I should have brought more of. They're pretty good at clearing out chaff units with, uh, you know, if you put a couple chevrons on them, I feel like they could be filling that role quite well. But Kadai Fireborn, get the jobs done. I believe Kadai Fireborn do have crazy fires, so maybe, you know, although Chameleon Skinks would probably wreck them in numbers. You'd have to be very careful. I could see a build against Lizardmen where you bring the Demon Smiths who have the healing ability so they can heal reforged units. So units that have the Hellforged ability uh, can be healed by the uh, Demon Smiths. But once again, just really struggling on the objective game, guys. And that normally is the case against Lizards. I even moved my Magma Cannon up on the point, which the Magma Cannon itself is still an anti-infantry chariot. So I figured it could still shoot, you know, if, if need be, but I need capture weight on the point. So the Magma Cannon has moved up, doing a little bit of fighting back here. Objective three is owned by the Lizards, but I do have some Hobgoblins moving in to try and grab that and snake that while uh, Unsummons coming down. And that's another big change. The fact that Unsummons are um, 10 seconds now, as opposed to three is really, really big. I like that quite a bit. Infernal Castellans bumping and grinding here. Oxyadol sitting in the back cackling and however lizards laugh. I don't know. I, I know there's some funny gifts of uh, toads laughing and whatnot. So probably something like that. And Hobgoblins going to bounce out, getting a charge. The vicious, cruel goblins of the old world moving in and doing battle with their, uh, their lizardman foes here. As we try and get this objective, we can't quite get it. Hobgoblins and Infernal Irons were in both units have good capture weight. And up on the high ground, looking like we might not have the best chance of getting this back is the Kadai Fireborn. 
are being poked down by the Chameleon's gang, so that damage quite uh, quite solid. But they do have 169 kills, that's what she said. About 700 value right now, butchering through the Saurus, and honestly might be able to kill this Ancient Salamander as well. We'll have to see. We're able to bring the beast down. So as far as summons go, we are going to be summoning in uh, just Hobgoblins and cheap units trying to get capture weight as Astrogoth is hiding in the bushes. I, I wanted to unsummon him, but he still had some Winds of Magic, so I basically parked him right here just so I could try and get another hammer. was hoping that he wouldn't be noticed, and you would think he would be a large entity, but he's actually infantry size, which is very strange, but he's here. He's got some hammers. We'll see what we can do. So Magma Cannon and company getting some routes. Goblin Labor is going to get massacred by Saurus Warriors, looking over at objective number three. It's pretty hotly contested, but I think the Lizards might have just barely taken it, although we do have those elite infantry here. We have the Infernal Iron Sworn still, and the Hobgoblins and some Wolf Riders, so maybe they will be able to overwhelm that one Clever Girl. So this objective probably will flip back right here, guys. You can see the points. I believe the rates at which points are accrued is a little bit faster now. I don't know if that was a change, but it certainly felt that way. But uh, objective three is being taken, and guys, we're starting to get a little bit of momentum on the points. Like, all three of the objectives start to flip in our favor here. And um, the, val the value lead is up for the Lizards, but the Hobgoblins getting in the point. Kadai Fireborn fully cleaned off that top point. 184 kills. Very, very savage stuff. And we start to get all three points. This one is uh, very, very close to flipping for us. The middle objective is very close for flipping as well as we start to push them back, but it was too little too late. Super fun game. We got to see the Infernal Castellans, Astrogoth running around, uh, Chaos Dwarves. We got to see the, uh, the Chariots they have, the Magma Cannon getting 1,700 value, which makes sense against very infantry-heavy builds. And uh, also you get to see the fact that Lizards can compete against them pretty well. Granted, we don't know the meta. We don't know what's really good in, uh, from either perspective. So we could eventually learn with a very tuned build that Lizardmen have no chance or Chaos Dwarves have no chance, whatever, right? Like, all in due time. But honestly, like most of the matchups... I have played with Anticity and uh, several other people in early access. It, it seems as if, like, there's... Yeah, they, they seem more balanced than other factions that have been at launch. Um, with the exception of a couple small things. But we'll figure that out in due time. Salamanders, they did okay. They recently got buffed. They were something I had to focus a lot of effort on, right? Didn't hate that. But the Chameleon Skanks were absolute beasts. Not a ton of value, but super annoying. And uh, I would imagine Oxyadol and the Clever Girls all did very good. Yeah, Oxyadol probably got, yeah, some nice value. Looking at the Castellans, 1,200, 1,100 certainly paid for themselves. Astrogoth is really, really good. 2,500 on him. He only costs about 1,900, which is great. And yeah, everything else performed well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. I think Chaos Dwarf Elite Infantry are really good. Quite excited to kind of mix those bad boys in because you have a lot of like really cost-effective chaff units, so you can afford to go Elite Infantry. It's not like as big of an issue. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Take care of yourselves. Well played, Duantisity. We'll be back with some more Smoke and Hot replays soon, and that is going to be it for tonight.